Hello there and welcome to another video from Change Tips and Tools. And here I am again, Phil, the Brummy that hails from Birmingham, England. Now, in a video I introduced you to a template that I created for my neurodiverse daughter, Daisy. Hence the name, the Daisy Helper. And if you want that full template now, then there is a link in the description to the Change Tips and Tools Patreon. But today, I wanted to show you how I built the Time Aid in the Daisy Helper, specifically the analog clock. Let me show you what I created, then I will show you how I did it. So this is what we're gonna to build today. So it's a, an analog clock face with a digital reader as well with you know, the, the hour hand synchron, you know, color coded here so people can easily look at the clock and tell the time from a digital or from an analog perspective. Um, and you click start here and the clock actually functions and works. You can change it from 12 hour to 24 hours as far as the digital's concerned and you can stop the clock. So if you want to know how to build this, keep watching. Let's do this. So let's build an analog clock face. Um, and we're going to use some pie charts and we're going to use some donut charts. And then we're going to put a little bit of VB in there as well, just to get the clock to animate. So I've got a blank Excel spreadsheet open. Um, I've saved it as the clock, as a macro enabled Excel file. I'm going to rename the tab here to be time. So right click on it. I'm going to make that time. So let's think about the things that we're going to need. So first of all, I'm going to need a time. So let's do a label, current time. And I'm manually going to put this in for now. We will make it automatic uh, later on in the video. So let's make this um, 10, 20 a.m. like so. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select that cell. I'm gonna do control one, let's bring up the formatting and I'm just gonna change that to time. And I want this one where I've got the full time and the seconds there as well and click okay. So that's now 10, 20, uh, and let's do that 10, 20, uh, let's do 33 seconds AM, like so. There you go. So that's my time. Next thing I want is I want um, calculations that cover my hour hand, minute hand, and the second hand. So let's do the hour hand first. Hour hand. So I want the hours. I then want the thickness of that hour hand. So I want a thickness calculation. And I want the rest. So we're literally going to use a pie chart to mimic the, the hands of a clock. So the hours, the calculation is going to be equals hour function using this as a reference. So that will return 10. Now, that's fine, but if we put 10, 20, and 33 seconds PM, it then returns 22. And there are only, the clock face only goes from one to 12, so we need to allow for that. So what we're gonna do here I take this calculation and do control copy here in the formula bar. Then I'm going to do if open bracket if this is greater than 12, then I'm going to do that value minus 12. So then um, if we take 12 away from 22, it becomes 10. If we take 12 away from 13 it becomes 1 and so on and if it's not greater than 12 then just make the normal time boom and there we go that now works 
again if I do 10 colon 20 colon 33 make that am it's still it's still fine as far as the thickness of the actual hand itself I'm going to do 0 0.05 and then for the rest of the pie chart it's going to be so we know we've got 12 hours so it's going to equal 12 minus the sum of these two here which will then give me the rest of the pie chart so let's take this and let's now do this to control copy control v once and then control v a second time so this will be my minute hand so let's change that to minute let's change this to minutes like so and then change this one to be to be of the second hand and that will be seconds and as far as the calculations for these the minutes um, is going to be equals the minute function so in this cell again close that bracket so there are the minutes this is going to change because there are 60 minutes in an hour so change that to 60 instead of 12 hit return And then this one again is 60 seconds in a minute. So again, just change that to 60, like so. And this calculation will be equal to the second function. And there we go. So we've got our seconds, we've got our minutes, and we've got our hours. Now, if you think about the way that an hour hand moves on a clock face, it doesn't stay on the 10, it moves gradually between the 10 and the 11 based on how many minutes and seconds have passed. So we need to add that to this calculation. And the way that we do that is on top of that, we do plus open bracket, this value divided by, so the 60 minutes an hour divided by 60. We then plus the seconds as well. So that value divided by the number of seconds in an hour, so there's 3,600, so that's 60 times 60. And that then gives us the positioning of the hour hand on our clock, <laughs> excuse me, on our clock face. Same with the minutes, we need to allocate um, or account for the seconds that have passed as well. And the way that we do that is just do plus that divided by the number of seconds in a minute, which is 60. And again, just change that to general, as far as the format's concerned. And there we go. So we've now got our values for our hour hand, minute hand, and second hand. Now let's look at the, the dials. So to do the dials, or the clock face dials, is we are going to use uh, Donut charts. So the first one I want is a visual aid. So I want um, my my hour values here. And as a visual aid, I'm just going to do equals sequence. Do 12 for the 12 hours. 1 to 12 on a clock face. Let's widen that. So those are my hour values. I then want the the first, I want an hour dial. which the values I'm going to put into 12 segments of one. That donut. I then want a, a minute dial. And again, that's going to be segments of 12 segments of one. And here I'm just going to put a marker on this as far as a value. So I'm going to be um, an hour icon a marker on each of these sections i'm going to use that and that marker or that icon i'm going to do in 
insert symbol and then here on normal text geometric shapes I'm going to choose this one here this here and do insert and then close it and again I'm just going to copy it all the way down like so so I now have all the values for my my clock face so I'm going to I remember on auto save it will keep saving so I'm going to select the minute dial and this is going to build from from in, inwards to outwards here so I'm going to do the minute dial first do insert on the insert ribbon and I'm going to choose a donut like so and let's move this over here let's make it a little bit bigger I'm going to get rid of the title and I'm going to get rid of the legend like so and then I'm going to right click on the chart and do select data and I'm going to do so there's my minute dial I'm going to do the next one I'm going to add so the title is going to be the hour dial I'm going to add that in then the values again are going to be these ones here and I'm going to enter that and click OK so I've now got my my minute hour I now want the outside of the clock face so I'm going to do add and I'm going to call this the outer clock face as a C as a series name and I'm just going to leave it as one so it's just solid like so and I'm going to click OK and I'm going to click OK again so we now have our our dials so I'm going to select these these dials I'm going to do control one and with that up I'm going to go onto the the fill so select the outer one first that series and on the fill I'm going to do for the border no line I'm going to select the next one which will be the hours I'm going to do no line and again the the minutes I'm going to do no line and then I'm going to reselect this one here which is the hours here and as far as the fill is concerned I'm going to do no fill but here if I just move it over to the side a little bit here so we can see so I'm going to do the plus sign and I'm going to add data labels to that series and then with more options here series options here I'm going to select the data labels and then you'll this will change to label options if I click that I'm going to select values here so if I select the values from a cell click the up arrow there and I'm going to select these 1 to 12 here and hit return and then click OK and we're going to get rid of the value and I'm going to get rid of the show leader lines like so so that's the the labels now if I click off it you can see I've got the labels here I'm now going to collect select the minute dial here and again on the fill I'm going to do no fill and they're going to do the plus sign and add those data labels and again I'm going to select the labels on the label options here I'm going to do value from cells to the up arrow and then I'm going to select these icons here and hit enter and click OK and get rid of the value on ticket and on tick the show leader lines so now if I just click off it you can start to see the clock face is starting to take shape however let's do something with this this outer outer um, donut chart and with that selected just that selected I'm going to do format and I'm going to do uh, shape fill I'm going to make it yeah that color there and then on the shape effects I'm going to do a preset and select this one here and that just gives it a little bit more of a yeah looks a little bit better again with that selected I'm going to change also now my donut size here so any one of these selected I'm going to change the donut size to let's take it to
Yeah, let's make that 55, I think. Let's make that 55, so that looks a bit better. And now we need to line this up here. So we're going to do the angle of the, f of the first slice. And we're going to change that. So if I click up, you'll see it starts to move clockwise. Let's take that to about 15%. There you go. It's in line with that, the middle, and in line with the middle there. Perfect. And there's our clock face. Now what I'm going to do is just with that selected format, I'm just going to take the outline off to that so there's no outline. Brilliant. Um, the other things that we need to do is if I go to um, select data and what I'm going to do is do hidden and empty cells is I'm going to say show data and hidden rows and columns because we're going to hide this eventually and if we don't tick that then the clock won't function. So I'm going to click OK and then that should be the same for all of them then. Good. Then I'm going to take this, select this, and let's do home, and let's make that slightly bigger. Let's make that 12. Then I'm going to select that. So you click it twice. So one, two. I'm selecting just that data label. Let's make that a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it 18, and I'm going to make it bold. And I'm going to do the same for the rest here for each quarter. So three, six and nine also. And there you go. Done. So we're now ready to attack our hands. So let's just move this over slightly there. And let's do the, the first one, which is going to be the hour hand. So I'm going to select the hour thickness and rest values here. And I'm going to do on the insert ribbon, I'm going to insert a pie chart. Yep. And I'm going to move, I'm going to do the plus sign. I want to move my legend to the right. So I'm going to get rid of that title as well. Let's get rid of that there. And you're going to select the pie chart and then with the properties up I'm going to do uh, no fill and no line. I'm then going to select the legend here, click the once and then click thickness again. So I've just got thickness selected here and then on the fill I'm going to do a solid fill and I'm going to make that black. A solid borderline on the borderline I'm going to make that black also and again i'm just going to get rid of the legend i'm then going to with that chart select so let's get rid of that there now just clicking that plus sign then i'm going to do format i'm going to do no fill and no outline for that so there is my my hour hand so let's move this out of the way here and i'm going to do control copy I'm going to select this cell and do Control V. And then I'm just going to move now the data range, just drag that down to the, the minutes. And again, select the, um, the pie chart, do no fill, no line. Let's get the legend up. Select that thickness, one, two, and then. As far as the solid lines concerned, let's make this a nice uh, purple, that third one down. Uh, as far as the line is concerned, make that solid. And again, the third one down. Then I can get rid of the legend. I'll take that off. So that's now my minutes hand. Let's move that one to there. And I'm going to do Control Copy. And again, just do Control V. And move that data down. Drag it. Like so. Select the pie chart, again no fill, no, no line for the border, and then going to make the legend visible. Select thickness, one, two, so two, two clicks on it, and again solid fill, I'm going to make it this orange here, 
the line, the borderline, make that orange also, and then get rid of the legend and get rid of that. So now that I've done that, let me just uh, again with these. And what I should have done is the first time, but I just need to right click on this, select data, and let's just make sure again that hidden rows and columns is ticked. Okay, the same on this one. Select data, hidden and empty cells, make sure that's ticked. Click OK, click OK again. And then finally on this one, select data, hidden and empty cells, tick show data in hidden rows and columns. Done. Now we're ready to position these on here. So let me just close that down there. So let's move this, drag it, and then roughly get it where I want it to be. And what I'm going to do is that and that. I'm just going to do format, align, center, and align middle. Okay. And then just select that. I'm going to hold down my shift key because I want to maintain the proportions here. And I'm just going to make this a little bit. I want it to reach these here. So again, I'm just going to select the outside as well. Let's do format, align, center, align, middle. That needs to be a little bit bigger. I'm just going to do shift button. And again, that, that, format. Line center and the line middle. Yeah, I think I think that works. Okay, let's now take the mini tan, which is this one. And again, so I know that's the middle there. Again, hold down that shift key. Let's make this one a little bit. And just move it and I want it to be touching the numbers here. So again, shift key. Yep, yeah, that's fine. And then fine, let's take the second hand. Put that in the middle. And again, hold down that shift key. Let's see how that looks. Probably all right now. With one of them selected, I'm going to do Control A, so it selects them all, and let's just do Format, Align, Center, Align, Middle. I think that looks all right. I think that looks that looks spot on. I want these to be slightly thicker, so let's make this one here um, 0 0.2. I'll give them 0 0.18. Let's make this one here 0 0.1. Yeah, that's fine. Then I want in the middle here, I want something to represent the, the middle of the clock here. So I'm going to go insert shape, take that circle, draw it like so. Then on here, on the shape format, I'm just going to do one tab and one just to make sure it's a circle. And then I'm going to choose this color here, this style, and I'm going to do on the effects preset and choose this one. Then I'm going to move it to the middle. Again, do Control A so they're all selected, and just make sure they're all aligned. Center, then align middle. Perfect. There we go. So now, when I change this, so if I do um, twelve colon twenty, let's do colon 24 pm 
that seems to work but look what happens here that doesn't look right and you can see because this has gone minus now if I do 12 24 colon 33 a.m. and hit return it's fine because it's setting that to zero so what I need to do is just put a fix in this calculation to say if the hour does not equal 12 then do this if it equals 12 then just set it to zero fundamentally so the way that I'd add that is I'd wrap this in if statement here prior to doing these adding these on I'm going to do if hour that b4 does not equal 12 then do this calculation if it does equal 12 then set it to zero and then just close that bracket like so but not there in the wrong place it needs to be there comma set it zero and then close it on that if function then if i hit return so that looks fine there but if i do 12 24 colon 45 and do pm boom it's now working right so i'm happy with that the next thing that I want on this then is, and obviously when I do F9, um, if I change this to now and then use the now function, it'll then recalculate each time I press F9. Um, but now I want to, because obviously this is a visual aid, is I want to, based on the, the colour of these hands here, the hour, the minute and the second hand, is I want to have the digital clock here as well. And be able to um, set that to either 12 or 24 hour so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to select this and do control A with them all selected like that I'm going to do on the shape format I'm going to do group and I'm going to group them all so they're all now one now that I'm happy with that and I'm just going to move that so that all moves together now wonderful now what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to create um, so this is digital digital clock format uh, and I want to make that so let's just do that make it a little bit wider and then want to do input here and this is going to be data validation so and what i'm talking about is obviously 12 or 24 hour format here um so i'm going to do data validation uh so data sorry ribbon data validation and do data validation again i'm going to do list and i'm going to type 12 hr for 12 hour and 24 hr for 24 hour clock and click OK. And then select 12 there now to create this i'm going to do it slightly different to what i did in the the actual template i'm going to create some shapes and then reference that in the shape so i want something for my hours and based on what's selected here the hours are going to change i'm then going to do my minutes this won't change based on this selection I'm then going to do my seconds and again that's not going to change based on the, the 24 12 hour selection however am stroke pm will so we'll, either, we'll show it when it's 12 hour let's make this center so center that's better so we'll show it when it's 12 hour but when it's 24 hour we won't so let's do equals if the hour of 
that. Let me just copy that. So I don't have to keep on topic copy. Is greater than 12, then it's that minus 12, yeah? Otherwise, just do it as itself, yeah? That's the initial, um, that's the initial calculation. And then we want to add the if that equals 12 hour, then we do that calculation. However, it's 24 hour, we just take the hour, don't we? Yeah. So that now has got that. If I change that to 24 hour, it should still be fine. And 12 hour. Again, let me change this to, um, let's do this as 01 colon uh, 26 colon 34 p.m. And there we go. Now we just get a 1, and I don't want that. I want it to have two digits. But if I change this to 24, it just gives me the 1300 hours. Right, so that works. So now I want to wrap this in a text function and then add the colon on the end so if i then do text so that's going to be my value all of that i do comma and the format is i want it to be two digits so i'm going to do quotation marks zero zero close those quotation marks and then close on the text function and then i'm going to do the ampersand quotation marks and do the colon there and hit return and there you go so now if i change that to 24 hour it does that wonderful and all i'm going to do with this one here is just do the text function so equals text because the the value is going to be minute yeah it's going to be that i'm going to close it comma and then I'm going to do zero zero close the brackets on the text function ampersand again put that colon hit return so there you go and then I'm going to do the same for the second so equals text open bracket the value the the value is going to be seconds second function beyond that close the bracket do comma and then the format's going to be again two digits so quotation marks two zeros close those quotation marks and then close the bracket there now on the seconds i don't need the colon in there so i'm going to hit return now for this one here is if that does help if you put the equal sign in there, doesn't it? So equals if open bracket that equals 12 hour, then I'm going to do text open bracket um, and it's going to be that cell value and the format is going to be open quotation marks i'm going to do a m forward slash p m close that quotation marks and close on the text if there's nothing there or if it's not 12 hour if it's 24 hour i just want to space so i'm going to do quotation mark space and then close that quotation mark and then close it on the function and hit return so now if I change this to 24 hour, it disappears. If I put it back to 12, it comes back. And obviously if it was AM, it would show it as AM as well. So now that I've done that, let's create our boxes now just to add 
this so we can look at it digitally now and look at the digital clock and how it relates to the analog clock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, insert. I'm going to do a shape. Let's take this one here. Let's just draw it there. I'm going to make it black. And in the formula bar of that shape, I'm going to do equals this cell here and hit return. And then with this still selected, it's not showing at the moment because it's black. If I go to the home ribbon and then change the font to be white, yep, I'm going to make it larger. So let's make it 24, make that bold. And as far as the alignments, I'm going to keep it at the top, but just do it in the middle like so. That looks fine. I'm going to re have that selected, do control D to duplicate it. And this one I'm going to do uh, equals um, the minutes. And I'm going to hit return. I'm also going to change the, the fill of this. because I want it to be matching this. So I am going to go shape fill do that third one there like so now we can see that it's black so on the home ribbon i'm just going to make that 24 and bold like so and again i'm just going to do control d and the fill on this one let's do um shape Fill. Let's make it the same orange as our second hand there. And again, with that selected in the formula bar, I'm just going to change that equals to the seconds, like so. And hit return. And on the home ribbon, change that back to 24. And make it bold, like so. And then I'm going to duplicate that. Do Control D. In the formula bar, let's get it equal this cell here. I'm going to hit return. And again, with that selected, I'm going to make it 24. And I'm going to make it bold and italic. Take the bold off, actually. And as far as the fill on that, I shape format i want uh, no fill and i want no outlines so that's just blank like so and then what i'm going to do is take this shift hold down the shift key and on the alignment i'm going to do distribute horizontally like so and then align uh, the middle like so so they're now perfectly aligned so now what I want to do is I want to make it clear that this is this is hours minutes and seconds so I want to put a label on that so I'm going to do insert I'm going to take a text box and let's just do it here so I can see and I'm going to make that seconds let's make that a little bit bigger so it fits Yeah, let's make that middle and middle like so. I, as far as the shape format, I'm going to have um, no fill, outline, no outline. Just, how does that look bold? Yeah, that's fine. I'm then going to do Control D to duplicate it, and let's put that there. Let's make that minutes there's our minutes i'm going to do control d again and let's put this here 
I'm going to have to change the font here to be white so I can see it. There you go. Let's make that others. And then on here, I'm going to do select, select objects, just so I can select these here. And I'm just going to do format, align, align center, like so. Like that. And that line center and then take this one and this one and again do a line center and then these here so i'm going to hold down shift key yeah and do a line and let's align bottom then we'll select them all and I am going to do on the format shape, I'm going to do group. So now I'm going to change this to take the find and select off. There we go. Then I can interact with the cells, change that, and that disappears. It's all one that works. Wonderful. So let's take this now. And let's move it to to there. Yeah. Right, I'm happy with that so far. Now we need to automate this so this now starts to calculate. So what I'm going to do is on this I am going to do um, equals now. If I hit return, and if I do F9 now. Watch what happens. It starts to interact and the clock becomes animated and in line with our hours, minutes, and seconds. We don't have to keep on pressing F9. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of code, and this is why we saved it as a macro. So, I'm going to right click on the tab here and do view code. I'm then going to up here, uh, I'm going to do on the Drop down, I'm going to select module here, not class module, but module. In the properties, I'm going to name this MC time and hit return. I'm going to double click on the module here. So I'm in the code window here. So let's create some sub procedures in this module that we can then interact with. So first of all, it's going to be sub and this is going to be run underscore clock and I'm going to hit return. So the first thing is I need to check something or something to say right do we start or stop the clock. So let's go back to my Excel file here by clicking the Excel icon and I'm going to create a switch and I'm going to put this to start like so. And I'm going to go back to my code window and first thing I need to do is check if switch is set to start as a note so if that say start in that cell which is cell b b3 yeah is that i want to um i want to make sure that start is in there and if so then I want to I want the clock to operate so I'm going to do if sheets open bracket so the sheet is going to be time there so in quotation marks the name of the sheet close that bracket and then the range is going to be b3 so range open bracket b3 close that bracket and I'm checking the value of that cell equals start. If it does, then I'm going to do something. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that there because we're going to use it again in a minute. So I'm going to do control copy there. So what we now need to do is that 
is that F9 that I was doing there, so when I do F9, that's basically me recalculating. So I need to get the code to do that instead of me pressing F9 all the time. So if I go to here and do um, F9, we calc you light sheet and the way that we do that is application full stop calculate we select that and the drop down which is great but this is only going to do it'll recalculate and then it'll stop it won't do anything so we need to get this to loop somehow and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use the inbuilt timer so we're going to set off a timer that will each second re-loop, redo this run clock here and do this check. And the way that we do that is with this particular bit of code. So we do application and we're going to use the on time, which is the, the timer. And it's going to be basically now, which is the current time plus a time value. So we're going to add a time value on, um, which is going to be a second. And the way that we do that is open quotation marks, zero hours, colon, zero minutes, colon, zero one for the second, one second. And I'm going to close that bracket. And each time that timer does it on each second is that we're going to run this procedure. So run underscore clock in quotation marks and there we go so let me just put that so um, so kick off timer to loop every second yeah now if this doesn't say start, we well stop. So I'm going to do return to else. Tab in here just to indent stuff here so it looks neater. I'm just going to do exit sub so it exits the procedure and stops. And then do end if. And there we go. So that is the clock. So let's do debug, compile. So if I go back to the Excel sheet, if I then go to um, view, see the macro here, and I do view macros, it's in this workbook only, there's one clock, if I do run, let's see what happens, and there you go, our clock is running. As soon as I change this to stop, it's looping every second, just stops the clock. Wonderful. Obviously, we don't want to keep doing that and we want to hide all this. So let's create some buttons to start and stop the clock. So again, I'm going to do insert. In fact, what I'm going to do first is go back to my code here and I'm going to write some new procedures here. So the first one, which is going to be um, sub start clock and hit return is where I want this here this value so I'm going to control copy that yeah and say right you start the clock you set that switch to start and then you call this procedure so I'm going to do run underscore clock you don't put it in quotation marks like you did here because it's part of this procedure here or this line of code run clock will call that so that's how we'll start the clock then to stop the clock stop underscore clock start with that circuit return is then I want to set this 
control copy control V and just set this to stop so this is to return put some notes in start the clock and this one here is stop clock so that apostrophe recognizes the notes and now we've got start clock procedure and stop clock so that's ready let's just debug compile save that i don't need the code window open anymore so i'm going to close that down and let's create some buttons to start and stop our um analog clock and the digital clock to get that moving as well so let's do insert shape i'm going to do this one here let's make it here and i'm going to choose the green and let's do uh start and let's do on the home ribbon let's make that a little bit bigger let's make it bold center it and center it as far as vertically and horizontally yeah and then going to do control d to duplicate that let's change this to stop as far as the fill's concerned format i'm going to make the fill red for stop then i'm going to let's put this up here at the top of the clock let's move this over here and let's take that one there and move it to there and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this and then shift key this one here and just do a line top so they are aligned then i'm going to right click on this one and do a sign macro and select the start clock in this workbook and click ok and then i'm going to right click on this one sign macro and do stop clock and click ok so that looks fine to me i'm going to just select here and do control a so everything's selected and then again on shape format i'm going to do group so everything's now grouped and what i'm going to do here is on this here i'm just going to select it all and do hide and again with this still selected i'm just going to move this to here i'm going to do view i'm going to take the grid lines off and now let's test it if i do start the clock is working hours minutes and seconds and if i change this to 24 hour boom stop it the clock stops change that back to 12 hours and there you go that is how i created the clock on the daisy helper template and of course my daughter is neurodiverse and she does struggle with an analog clock so this really helps her sort of look at the you know the hours in relation to the, the hands and the minutes the hand etc and it really helps her um, so that's how you build a clock within excel and in the next video for this daisy helper template series i'm going to show you how i built the date checker aid with dynamic calendars um, so stay tuned for that video coming next week um, i hope you found this useful if so please help the channel by clicking that like subscribe and smash that notifications button for future content and as always i wish you an absolutely wonderful day wherever you are in the world please take care and i look forward to seeing you in the next video from change tips and tools bye bye now